Good afternoon, everyone. We gather here today in profound sadness and grief as family and friends of Suzanne Wendy Twelve Tree, whose death on Tuesday, the 16th of April 2019, aged 62 years, was both sudden and unexpected. And on behalf of Sue's family, Greg, Abby and Darren, Todd and Rachel, and Nick and Renee and their families, as well as her mum, Elspeth, and siblings, Paul, Christine, and Scott, and their families, it's my privilege to welcome you here today to celebrate Sue's life and also to say goodbye to her. Today, we're here to celebrate and remember a life that was full of meaning and authenticity, one that makes our hearts swell with love, meaning, and memories. My name is Bronte Price and I'm a funeral celebrant and I'm deeply honoured, of course, to have been asked here today to conduct Sue's ceremony. Sue and I were friends for more than 50 years. Our parents were both farm neighbours and friends. She and I shared going to school together, learning to play piano together, practising tennis together, ballroom dancing together at the Alpha Key Dancers and hanging out together in our early 20s. Even then, she was a formidable individual. Sue and I maintained our close friendship through some wonderful times, as well as some very tough times for both of us that ensured we understood each other deeply and had common ground on which to build that friendship. But per perhaps most significantly, it was Sue who suggested five years ago that I, became, that I become rather a celebrant. Within hours of her putting that idea into my head, I'd enrolled in the required course. Three days before she died, Sue was one of our two legal witnesses when I married my husband, Clint, in Melbourne. It had been such a happy time for her. And of course, her death came as a massive shock to us, just as it did to everyone here today. Sue loved to support those who were different from the mainstream, and she was wired to help others without any expectation that somehow or sometime they'd help her in return. And when you bought into a relationship with Sue Twelve Tree, you also bought into the expectations that you'd share your views honestly and that you'd argue and debate respectfully. And you soon got to understand that if you were going to discuss or disagree or argue with her, you'd better have some credible evidence behind your views. Sue was one of those people who was to be seen and heard. She grew up to be open-minded, accepting and non-judgmental. And she and her siblings were proud of the fact that they were completely different individuals from each other who knew the depth of their parents' love and the fact that they always had their backs no matter what. Sue was one of those rare people who cram two lifetimes into one who give so much to their families and communities in their lifetime without expecting anything back, who in fact build entire new communities of those in need, who galvanise support from unexpected quarters and who query and ask the uncomfortable, inconvenient questions in a bid not to stroke their own ego or to necessarily win, but simply to make their own lives better and the lives of others around them. That applied with equal measure, whether you were her friend, someone she was assisting in rehab, a member of the medical profession, or a poor politician or bureaucrat designing a new facility for paras and quads. Put simply, Sue changed the lives of hundreds, if not thousands of people, many of whom will never know that it was her struggle and her fight to make their lives better that helped achieve that. When I asked Sue's family what lessons they'd learned from her, they were quick to respond with these legacies that are, of course, full of wisdom and insight, as you'd expect. To be kind, to have an open mind, to have perspective, to be honest, to set goals and respect people by being on time. And possibly the most profound one came from a direct quote from Suzanne. I wish to leave this world better for having passed through it. 